JV, 75 points in that first half. Yeah. That's a high for the season. What, what had you guys, what made it possible for you guys to get off to that start? What did you see positive for your yeah, team? Yeah, I think there was a lot of things that uh, went really well for us. We were able to get stops and get out in transition. Uh, I think we were able to get downhill. Uh, Spencer turned the corner. Uh, Nick's ability to have an impact at the rim. Uh, at the end of the night, I think we have 20 offensive rebounds. So we, we talked about that ability to uh, crash offensively, rebound the basketball, but also sprint back and keep them under control in transition. We were able to do both in that first half, which was great. And then some shots went in. And so that always uh, helps also. Ending the losing streak, not only ending it, but ending it against a team like this, who's second in the West coming in, fourth best record in the league. What does that mean for this club right now? Yeah, it shows uh, really who we are, the, the no quit in us. You know, we talked about having faith and, and tenacity. The faith is going into the game, believing that you were going to win the game. And I really thought that we had that sense uh, that we were going to win the basketball game, the preparation behind it. And then the tenacity goes into the, uh, the ability to have urgency and to be able to hit people and understand your role and valuing each possession. I'm gonna keep preaching that to our group and uh, as we continue to grow together. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think we really went into this game believing that we were gonna win. Uh, Lonnie's first game since November 30th. Um, it was kind of Dennis's first game back too, yeah, although his yeah. absence wasn't as long. How would you assess how those two performed tonight? I, I think immediately you could see uh, their impact when they entered the game. You know, Lonnie's ability to get a steal and push to the break for us. Uh, I thought the looks that he had were, you know, really good. He had good bounce to him. Uh, I didn't go back to him with his second stint just because that game started to get a little close on us. Uh, and then Dennis, his impact, uh, even to the end of the game where he in inbounds the ball short clock, we miss it, he gets an offensive rebound. So his ability to, to guard defensively, uh, make shots tonight for us, drive the basketball, uh, but overall just his spirit for our group is so huge. Uh, it, it gives us a I don't know, an uh, uh, edge, a swag about us that uh, kind of goes through the group when he's playing. You had, you had talked uh, earlier about how the, the way you guys were playing, you were pleased with the process. Yeah. You guys just weren't getting the results. But do you get a sense of how important it was for this group to get a positive result? For sure. Definitely. Uh, at the end of the day, these guys want to win, and uh, you want to be rewarded for your work. And... Uh, you know, I was really trying to strike a balance with this group of coaching them and letting them know, like, there's some mistakes we've been making that we can cover up for. You know, last time we played this group, we did some really good things well, but the transition defense was not very good. Uh, this time we were able to, you know, at least contain them in transition. Uh, then our ability to play them in the half court, uh, we were you know, pretty confident in. Uh, switch coverages tonight, which is great. That's something we've really been challenging our group with, and I think that ability tonight really paid off for us. Speaking of switching coverages, just in the first quarter, I think you ran every type of pick-and-roll coverage there was to run at Shea. What's the process of that like with the players? Is that an ongoing conversation yeah. in timeouts? Is it, hey, feel free to mix it up at your discretion? Like, what goes into that? Yeah, Lucas, that is, um, you know, really that's a bubble experience for me. In the bubble when there was no fans and uh, I could really bark orders from one end of the court to the other, um, you know, I try to envision the game as it's happening for our group and I challenge them to like listen to me as the game is going along. I give them complete credit for being able to change coverages on the fly, of seeing the situation, seeing the threat, and trying to eliminate the threat. And so tonight, like you said, we literally threw everything at Shea uh, to keep him off balance. And uh, really, we talked about that in the huddles, that we're going to continue to do it, and I gave them credit for being able to, to execute it. How's Cam uh, Johnson feeling after the game? Look like yeah, CJ, he's something? got the hamstring uh, cramping, and so uh, definitely being assessed. But uh, uh, the first prognosis was he was just cramping. Jack, in that third quarter, I think is when OKC's rally started. I guess as well as you guys played, I guess how concerning was it? Some of those old habits started to come back, and then OKC cut it down. I believe the sixth in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you know it's it's tough playing with a lead. 
And uh, I think uh, they did a good job of just really, first of all, in the third quarter, getting into the bonus extremely early. I think we're like nine or 10 minutes on the, on, on the clock. And so they were able to use that to slow down the game and shoot free throws. So that's probably the biggest mistake we made. We had you know, really got to the bonus. Uh, uh, they got to the bonus early. That lesson we got to learn from, that a team is just driving the basketball. We got to be able to contain the basketball without fouling. Uh, besides that, um, I think our execution down the stretch was, you know, par. And I was going to follow up on that by saying, I guess, with, with the win, do you take more from how well you guys played in that first half, or is it more of take the win, but also these reoccurring issues have kind of re reared their ugly head, I guess, in that second half, and you want to make sure you take, get those concerned too? No, it's perfect for a coach. You'd be able to uh, give them some credit for getting the win, doing what you did in the, in the first half. But uh, that was a challenge. We showed two clips at halftime, how they were going to beat us. They was going to beat us in transition, and they was going to beat us driving the basketball. So our ability to contain the basketball is going to be huge for us, uh, and then our ability to get back in transition is going to be huge for us going forward. So those are the challenges. It gives me a chance to hit them again as we go into Portland game. JV, I asked Nick on the court about his confidence going into this game based on his performance on New Year's Eve in Oklahoma City. He said his confidence is always high, no matter what the game is, but that's 38 and 29 in two games against these guys. Just what have you seen in both of those games and his confidence lately? I just think he's playing really free. And so whether that is him, uh, dribbling full court after getting the rebound and, and going to dunk the basketball, uh, whether that is his ability to understand that he doesn't always need to use his size to get offensive rebounds. He can use his quickness and speed, and he's been doing that in his length at the same time. So I think the game is just, you know, even – Nick's still a young player, uh, but he's starting to grasp concepts and how people are playing him and using that to his advantage. Uh, and I think he's just growing. And, and with growth comes uh, the, the ability to, to feel good on the floor. Uh, he knows his teammates need him. That's a good feeling. And he's delivering.